Greetings Earthlings. Uh, we're going to talk today about doing a brake repair and potentially tightening the uh, stub axle housings on a BCS walk behind tractor. This is an old model 850 but it has the same brake and hub system as all the BCS machines with steering brakes and differentials. That would be the 735, 745, well no not the 745, but back up on that, 735, 605, 737, 830, 850, 749, 852, and 853. That covers them all. Uh, also the 732 and 739 have stub axle assemblies like this. The 739 has brakes, 732 does not. First thing we're going to do is jack it up off the ground. As you can see I have no implement on this machine. Um, and you can use a jack, but I'm going to use the low technology way of doing this and just rock this up, get a block under the center of it. It's kind of evenly balanced on that, but as soon as I take this wheel off, the weight's going to shift to the other side. 17 millimeter socket. Take the wheels off. You can do this with hand tools, of course, but I'm being lazy. not as good as it used to be. There it goes. Right. This is the uh, barbell weight post for mounting wheel weights. We have mounted to my own, own machine here. This is my own tried and true machine. I've also got a set of axle extensions on this thing which I need to remove to do this repair. Looks like those are the old style axle extensions. I gotta grab a wrench to get those off because the socket won't fit up on that. The newer ones have cutouts here that allow you to use a uh, a ratchet that these old ones didn't. So I'm going to hold the brake, keep that from turning. Well, at least I'm going to try. Let's turn this back. Wow, somebody got those tight. There we go. I guess that was me since this is mine. Most tractors don't have axle extensions on them, so you wouldn't need to go through this procedure. But mine does. I mow a lot of hillsides, so it's good to have the extra stability. differential which locks the axle across the across from itself. Now once that differential locks in, turn. should have done that in the first place. Okay. The brake drum itself is held on by only the wheel or axle extension that happens to be bolted to it. Sometimes these will be frozen in place by corrosion if it's been a long time since they've been off of there and you have to whack it with a hammer a little bit. Of course you don't want to use a steel hammer because you don't want to dent it. Just use like a rubber dead blow hammer, brass hammer, or, or put a block of wood in between it if you're hitting it with a steel hammer. But it'll come off. So there's the brake shoes. Um, the, brakes, the, the brake system on these things is extremely simple. It's just the cable which gets moved by the lever on the handlebar pulls up on this lever and you can see that it just forces the brake shoes out. Basically the pin that comes through here is flat on the two sides and as that flat part rotates it just pushes the shoes out. The shoes are pulled back in by return springs. Let me pop this thing out of here now. Unlock the differential so I can turn this thing. There are return springs right in here, one on each side. Those pull the brake shoes back together and they are all that hold the brake shoes on there. So we are going to take those off now to drop the brake shoes off. Sometimes the brakes just need to be cleaned. Um, these, my brakes are not as effective as they once were. You could see that earlier when I tried to hold the brake and keep the wheel from turning. It kept slipping. Uh, these brakes have become glazed. Uh, probably just dust and grime has got up in here. Um, and I'm going to clean them up real good and resurface them a little and put them back together. So first I've got to get these 
shoes springs off here. Now actually if I was just going to do a brake cleaning and resurfacing I wouldn't even have to remove the pads. I could just take a strip of sandpaper like this, like 80 grit or 120 grit, and go in here and work those things over like that to get a new surface on them. Use some degreaser like denatured alcohol to take the grease and grime off, flush the whole thing down, resurface them and probably put it back together. I'm going to go ahead and remove these because I want to do the hub tightening as well. So I'm going to go through that procedure. Pop these springs off of here. These are tight buggers. And in fact, the worst part of this whole repair is getting these brake springs back on. We'll get to that later in the video when we start putting it back together. There, there they are. There's two brake pads and the two springs. Okay, now we're going to take the backing plates off so we can get to our hub bolts. These are, this is a six millimeter Allen wrench. I'm using an Allen socket, but of course you can also get the L-shaped Allen wrench, which are cheaper. Now we'll get lazy and use this. There is, or there are rather, two halves to the brake backing plates. There's one half, like a semicircle, and the other half. The other half. This half, of course, has the lever in it. There's no reason to, for me to unhook the cable from this as long as the uh, brake actuator lever is moving easily, which it is, um, then I don't need to do anything with that. I can just let it hang there. So, some nice flop and dust in here. These are the three nuts, one, two, and three, that hold the stub axle housing assembly, which is this piece right here, these are black on the newer tractors, holds that piece into the side of the transmission casing. These bolts can, or these nuts rather, can loosen up over time and you'll get an oil leak on the bottom. So if you see an oil leak on the bottom of a BCS machine and that BCS machine is equipped with differential, likely it is not an oil seal leaking on the axle. 90, 99 times out of 100, it's going to be that this stub axle assembly has loosened up and it's simply leaking at the gasket surface. The easy way to tell whether it's a gasket leak because of a loose hub or an actual oil seal being bad is where the oil is coming from. If the oil is coming out from the axle seal itself, then the inside of this brake uh, drum will be saturated with oil because the oil is coming out inside the brake system. Uh, if the oil, if you take off your brake drum and the brakes are dry, yet you have an oil leak, it's coming from the gasket surface. So, you can use a 13 millimeter uh, short drive socket with an extension to kind of get around this hub on one of the flat sides and tighten these things down. Now that's good and tight. I was not actually experiencing a leak on this. I'm just doing this with preventative maintenance. Uh, but, you know, so you're not seeing me move these things much. <clears throat> Virtually none. Now, if you have a torque wrench, you can torque these things to 18 foot pounds. Uh, of course, if you have a torque wrench in inch pounds, you would just you know, multiply that by 12. So 12 times 18. But yeah, 18, maybe even 20 foot pounds is plenty. Um, I've been doing this so long, I know how to make them, so I'm not going to bother getting a torque wrench here. But that's it. Now we're ready to put it back together. Get some more of this fluff and goo off here. Let me grab a rag real quick. Okay. I'll put this, put the backing plates back on. Relatively clean, so good shape there. Now, if you were to take off the, uh, the cable here and remove this other backing plate, when you put them back on, you just have to make sure you orient everything properly. You can see where the brake cable needs to drop down because it comes through this aisle here. So obviously the lever with, or the brake backing plate with the lever on it has to be beneath that. You can switch them, uh, but it doesn't work right because then your cable won't hook up. The other thing is occasionally from, you know, if your brakes haven't been used in a long time or if you've bought an old BCS machine that's been sitting around, and the brake, uh, brakes haven't been used and, and the thing is sat outside and it's gotten all rusty, a lot of times these brake actuating levers will seize up in here. 
This lever is, is basically part of this backing plate now. When they install it in the factory, they actually weld this end on. So this is an integral part of this thing. You cannot take it out. So it has to move freely. I mean, just free as a bird. If this, back, if this lever is stiff at all, the brakes are not going to return. You usually have enough force with the lever up on the handlebar to activate the brakes, but if the springs in here pulling the brake pads back together can't overcome the friction of this of a, of a, of a stiff, stuck up joint here, it'll just the brakes will drag all the time. It, it won't release. So you have to throw penetrating oil to this and work it back and forth, work it back and forth. I'll actually take this off and I'll clamp this piece in a vise. So it's held firm and then work on this, work on this, keep loading it down with penetrating oil. Basically, it has to be free enough that if you were holding this thing in your hand and just spun it in a circular motion, the lever would spin as you did that. That's how free it has to be in order to work properly. So if you got one that's all stuck up with corrosion, that's how much you're gonna need to work on it. And if it's too bad, of course, you can just replace it. These backing plates are probably, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks a piece, something like that. The brake shoes themselves virtually never wear out. I mean, these brake shoes on this machine are 20 years old, probably, 22 years old. Uh, these machines simply don't move fast enough to wear the brakes out. I mean, you got a machine that moves three miles an hour maximum and it's working speed, so those brake pads just seem to last forever. Occasionally, in high moisture conditions, when somebody's let it sit outside for a long time, I've actually seen the brake lining just peel off the aluminum pad, then they're shot. And very rarely, I've actually seen them wear out. But man, I can count the number of worn brake shoes that I've replaced in, on one hand, probably. Let's get these all wiped down. I'm going to, uh, well, I don't need to let you... We're just going to pretend that I've resurfaced these brakes. I'm not going to make you wait through the resurfacing process. But like I said, you just do wipe them down with degreaser, uh, resurface them with some 80 grit sandpaper or 120 grit, and put them back on. So now we're going to yeah, we'll get the major stuff off. So the hooks go on from the front, as you can see, like that. And I'm going to put these up on there. One side of this has the flat pad, one side has the semicircle. This is for the flat pad, this is for the semicircle. So we're going to push this up like this, one on each side. Get those springs outward. Whoop, great, lost my spring. Thank you. Now I could probably slip that in there later. I'll set this one down from the top. Here's the hard part, getting these suckers hooked back up. A needle nose vice grips is usually a good idea. Yeah, I don't know, this needle nose feels like it's been stretched. <laughs> tight, try to tighten it up a little more. Okay, and you gotta stretch this up and try to get it back in that hole. I will use a screwdriver usually for extra leverage. I have the screwdriver oriented across the top of the stub axle housing there and pry it up like that. That was easier than usual. Man, you think I've done this before. Usually you will learn some new swear words. Sorry, the light isn't too good here, but the camera seems to be getting it. There we go. My gosh, that, that was too easy. All right, now we're pretending these are all done. So you would put the brakes, throw them back on, reassemble the wheel and axle extension if you have it. And you're good to go. Thanks for watching.